All right, well, chapter two of the book of Job, getting into the story, this is still what would be considered from a literary standpoint, the epilogue or the beginning of the story of Job. Uh, verse one, and again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. So this is telling again that story that we had talked about uh, in verse or chapter one also. Uh, and the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But, for, but put forth thine hand now and touch his bone of flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. So this uh, isn't so much, it's, it's telling kind of that same story, but this isn't so much the literally same story we talked about in chapter one. This is the next time. So God, Satan, for some reason, Satan is coming among the sons of God. These are the priesthood holders or the worshipers, the true followers of God. He's coming among them to talk with God. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's more to that story of how that's working out than we're getting. But he's basically, Satan's going back to talk to God. And God's like, hey, look at Job. He didn't curse me when you took his possessions away from him. And Satan's coming in and going... Yeah, I, you know, here's the thing though, man will give up all of their stuff to save their life. And that's all that's happened here. He was willing to give up his life thinking because you were taking his stuff away from him, that his life was gone as well. So of course he's not going to fall for that. He's going, he's not going to curse you uh, because he still has his health and his vitality. But if you take that away from him, I think he would curse you and he would hate you. So this is, again, another part of that gospel of prosperity concept, uh, dealing with possessions. If you lose your possessions, that's something, somehow God is cursing you or, or having problems, you know, taking things away from you or not blessing you. Um, and so he's saying, but you, he still has his health. Possessions aren't that big of a deal. Let's, let's, let's mess with his health. Uh, now, uh, verse six, and the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is on thine hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him a potsherd to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. So he took, uh, he had boils like blisters all over his body from the bottoms of his feet to the head of his, to the top of his head, basically. Now, if you have oils or blisters forming on your bottoms of your feet, that makes walking extremely painful. So he's going to take a pot shirt, which is basically a piece of a pot. Like if you made a pot and then it broke into pieces, one of those pieces would be a pot shirt. Okay. He's taking that and he's scraping himself, meaning he's popping the blisters all over his body to get the pus out, to get his body to heal. That was something they did at then. And then he sat down among the ashes. Now, why ashes? Ashes can be two things. One is they use ashes as a, a humbling, you know, the sackcloth and ashes idea to become humble. But ashes actually have some antiseptic properties to them. They actually can help in uh, uh, like antibacterial type situations. So they can actually help you in healing. So it's... Uh, uh, it could be he's using this as a, he's popping them, putting ashes on there to help in cleaning the wounds out, basically, that he's got to try to help him to heal. Verse 9, then his wife, then said his wife unto him, dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. So she's going, Job, what are, you know, why are you, why don't you just, just realize God hates you? Just admit it. God hates you. Just curse God. Say, why are you doing this to me, God? I'm going to stick it to you and I'm going to kill myself. And he said in verse 10, but he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? 
In all this, did not Job sin with his lips? Now, this brings us to a, an interesting point. Job presents us with a really interesting concept. Uh, and in here, he's, he talks about how good comes from God. Absolutely. Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Yes. Shall we not receive evil? This is the interesting thing. Can God give us evil or can evil come from God? Now, evil doesn't necessarily come from God. Uh, but we can experience things in our life that God allows to happen. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes it is allowed because in the situation we have here with the, with the, the backstory of Satan talking to God about tempting him, sometimes things happen to us because Satan is trying to break us. Sometimes God allows that to happen, to test us, to try us mostly to prove to ourselves that we are followers of God, to really push our faith. Our faith doesn't grow in easy times. Our faith grows when we have challenges and hard times. Uh, the other thing to consider as well is sometimes we make choices and God allows those choices to still happen. If I play with fire, if I pick up a stick of, that's on fire and I start waving it around or touching it to my skin, it's going to burn me, and God is going to allow that to happen. Not because he wants it to happen, but because he allows agency to happen. We can make choices that put us into hard situations. If I refuse to pay my taxes, and the IRS comes down on me and takes all my stuff away from me, and I cannot curse God on that. I can't blame him for that. That's that gospel of prosperity philosophy. If I'm not being blessed of God, then I am cursed of God. Meaning, the assumption is it's all up to God. And the reality is God is going to let me make my own choices. If I am poor in my choice making, I'm going to suffer the consequences of that. Again, not because he wants to. He doesn't want us to have that pain and suffering. But consequences have to follow the choice. And that's, he allows us to have our choice. So a really interesting philosophical concept. So I'd love to hear any thoughts you have on that as well. Now, verse 11, we're going to learn some interesting things in this verse here. When Job's three friends heard all this evil that was, that was come upon him, they came, everyone from his own place. So there's three friends here, Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhuite, and Zophar the Namathite, they, for they all had made an appointment together to come to mourn with him and to cover him. So these are Job's three friends. They're coming to him. These are three friends from different tribal groups. They're coming in to help him. Now here's something that's interesting. When we look at who the names of these people and what does the name mean and where are these people from. So if we look at this, first off we have Eliphaz means easy living. Easy living. Temanite is a person of the south country or blessed country, often used in the songs of Solomon, in fact. So he is from the southern areas, so south of where uh, Job is, so maybe towards the shore, ocean lines, shorelines over there, the Indian Ocean. He is from a place that has easy living, maybe because it's a coastal area too. It has great weather. It doesn't have a lot of hard risk challenges like you know, extreme weather, or things like that to happen. So Eliphaz uh, is coming from a place of comfort, easy living, easy way to do things. Bildad, the Shuhuite, his name, Bildad, it means someone from afar. So he's he is has traveled a long ways. Uh, and Zophar, you know, the Shuhuite, sorry, Shuhuite, it means someone who dwells in the lowlands or prairie. So he has come from a prairie lands area, basically. Now, prairie lands are very open land. Uh, a lot of moisture falls on those lands. Oftentimes, they get a lot of moisture. They get a lot of good weather. You know, they get some extremes and things as well, but a lot of growing a lot of crops and things that can be there um, as well. So that's where 
Bildad is coming from. He's coming from a long ways away in a plains area, maybe the steppes of Asia, possibly. We don't know. Uh, Zophar, his name means vain or superficial. Uh, and uh, Namathite basically is, uh, means pleasant, beautiful, or easy living, basically. So his three friends are coming from an environment of comfortable, easy living. So they are, you could, you could say these are like the, you know, the, the four, the four of them together make up a wealthy class. They have lots of prosperity. They have lots of money, lots of wealth. They can go do things, you know, they're not complaining when, when Disneyland raises their prices or when airfare goes up. Why? Because they have land. When natural disasters happen, oh, we'll just get in our private plane and we'll leave the area. We can eat at all the restaurants. We can shop at all the stores. We're not worried with recessions or things like that because we have plenty. Life is good. We don't have to work for it that hard. Life seems pretty easy, that whole prosperity idea. So these are the kind of friends that Job has. This is going to be important to understand this as we hear how his friends interact with Job and the attitudes and perspectives that we get. Because they're going to give us a really good perspective of worldly philosophy versus uh, spiritual philosophy as they have these debates and discussions moving forward. Now verse 12, when they lifted up their eyes afar off and knew him not, they lifted up their voice and wept. And they rent everyone his mantle and sprinkled dust upon their heads toward heaven. So they sat down with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spake a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. So they're, as they're coming, they hear, man, Job went through this bad time. This is crazy. Let's go comfort Job. So they get together. They go in this group to comfort Job. They see him from a distance and went, oh my gosh, look at the disease he's got. Now, some people have thought maybe like an elephantitis type disease or something is maybe what Job was afflicted with. Um, could be like a smallpox type thing with all the little boils and stuff all over chicken pox or something. Maybe they decide they're going to rent their clothes too, and put the dust on their head. Kind of that we're going to get into humility. And they spent seven days with him without speaking to him because he was in just so much pain. They didn't, they, they haven't talked with him yet. So let's jump over to chapter three to see how these conversations go.